welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. It's good to see you again for our next episode for Beyond Kicking and Punching with Sifu Aldacascos and myself, Sonny Pabuaya. And again, it is Thursday where we get to ask Sifu Al any questions we want or the ones that have been sent in. And the question is right now is old school training or new school training better? Again, just to remind you guys, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe, like, make sure you hit that notification so that this way you'll get to know when Sifu Al comes on and answers maybe your question. So now let me introduce the man himself, Sifu Al de Casco. Hey everybody, glad to have you on. Nice speaking to you folks and eye to eye and uh, answering your question. Now there's the question that uh, Sonny asked, it's a loaded question, you know, because from what I understand, Sonny, you're asking me whether the traditional versus the modern way of training is, well, anyway, you, you want to know the difference, correct? Yes, we want to know what the difference, because I know the way you've taught me is that there's always good with every little thing, right? I mean, it's just a matter of finding what works best for us, I guess, as individuals, because yourself being the professional maximizers, you've taught me how to better myself personally, and what works for me doesn't necessarily work for my students or somebody else. So again, mm -hmm. your experience, you know, give us maybe a story or, or, or how you've trained throughout the years and compared to how you're training now kind of thing, or how you're training other people. Well, we can go into two areas, right? The modern way and the traditional way, or the, the old school way and what the new school is teaching now. Uh, when I say old school, I'm going to go to the days when we didn't have any pads, you know, and when, uh, when we yeah. practice, instead of practicing our throws on, um, on mats, you know, it was pretty much on hardwood floor because uh, we, we trained, even if we wore the, you know, traditional, uh, you know, karate top or kung fu top or, or kempo top or uniform, the way that we trained was just like, if it was going to happen out on the street, you know, then it was going to be like the street. The street is going to be concrete, dirt, and wood floors or whatever. So it wasn't going to be any padding. And, you know, versus what we do today, in the old days, we didn't have any kind of foam pads to work with. All we did was we develop our knuckles. You know, the knuckles became really big and strong so that it was for hitting power. And when we um, trained back in the days, you know, we, we didn't have, you know, growing cups and things this way. Matter of fact, I used to use it like tongs like this and stick it into my my um, my undershorts just so that when I get kicked in the groin, it wouldn't hurt that much, you know? But uh, that was uh, those days. And, you know, when we say that we trained in the old days, you know, uh, when we're talking about wearing protective cups, I'm not talking about wearing coffee cups or anything down there. You know, we're talking about yeah. regular groin protectors that they do nowadays, like you do in football. and those days there we actually made a lot of contact and you know it wasn't uncommon for somebody to go to the hospital living now and then with a cuts mm -hmm. or or you know maybe a small broken bones or things that way and matter of fact it was like a badge of honor uh, to get that and when you grew up with that kind of mentality of making a lot of semi-contact to pretty much good contact but not enough to really injure the person you could because there's been there's been a lot of accidents in classes, you know, when we were practicing Kempo Karate or it was pretty much rough and tumble. And that's the way that the, the instructors liked it at that time, because for them it's reality. You got to understand that these people came out of post-war. Their mentality was still yet war out on the streets. It wasn't until when you get into the 1960s or mid 60s and 70s where Jun Ri, you know, came up with the, uh, the safety equipment, which is the padded forms and things this way and things become a little bit lighter and I think that came because we were having a lot of uh, children getting into the, into the martial arts so they had to be a little bit more protective so the training between the old style and used totally different there was more contact in those old days as, they, as it is today in today's world also there are contact sports that get a little bit more heavier than uh, without the pads uh, maybe slightly pads as you get into MMA where you know everything is actually full contact the last one 
standing or the one that's standing is the ultimate winner. The old days too, you know, in places like we used to have in, in Hawaii, in the middle of the sugarcane fields, or later on it was the civic auditorium where they would have almost sort of like death matches, especially when it came to the Filipino fighter knife of Escrima, Carleo, Arnez. They used to have these kind of competitions. But yeah, we did have the kind of competitions where it was a little bit more violent. When you come into the modern world of martial arts, and I would say the modern world of martial arts, I would say in the uh, late 1960s, 70s, where safety equipment became more was this why it's called a safety factor, more for safety equipment. You could solicit or have more people come into the fact that they could come into the martial arts not getting injured and then progressing up. And that's pretty much the best way to do it. The way that I did it in the old days, getting directly into more contact, it was too dangerous, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But there are different ways of training. It's really the choice. You will find some schools that like to go the old way and they become very selective. Use the small, you know, five, maybe 10, maybe 15 at the most, because they practice more in a garage type of setting, mm -hmm. close invitation only, you know, and there are a few of them here in Hawaii like that. Yeah. And, but when you get a little bit more commercial uh, storefront, then it's a little bit more open and you, you keep away from the too much body contact because the best way to do is to teach them non-contact and light contact or kiss contact and then full contact as they progress up. Some schools would pretty much regular, you know, like to stay more into the non-contact and practice a lot more forms than they do the self-defense part or the, the sports part of it or the meditation part. You know, there's reasons why people get into the martial arts. Mm -hmm. And you know, usually when I people come into, I ask them, what's your reason? What do you learn? What do you want? Some of them come inside, oh, I'm just curious about the martial arts. Some of them come in, oh, you know, I want to, I want to learn the philo philosophical part or spiritual part, or I want to get into physical condition. Oh, I just want to defend myself against my neighbor, or I want to get into sports. There's so many different reasons. So the first thing is just that you got to know your, you got to know your priorities, where exactly what you want to learn, you know, in what area. Some people will say, you know, I want to learn the sports and eventually they see the self-defense value of it or some of them get into the spiritual aspect of it and then they begin to see well you know there's a physical part of it that i like to know and and there's an attitude emotional part of it and total change for me it's i started off pretty much as self-defense and then from that point on after building up the self-confidence and self-esteem i projected out into different areas <laughs> So martial arts is just not one area. The minute you get into martial arts, it's like getting into 180 degrees, going from this point to the other point. And naturally you can go completely all the way around 360 and then up to the very beginning again, starting all over again, because no matter what you do, when you open up the door of the martial arts, it's like opening up a closet. The door is totally black on the other side. Put the key in, you open it up, you're kind of afraid to, to see what's on the inside. But the minute you turn the light on, you find out there's all kinds of benefit, things that you never knew that was there that could be very beneficial for you. Yes. Eventually, some people get, can get into the martial arts. Well, they get into all kinds of activities, you know, doctor, acupuncturists, actors, directors, stunt coordinators, whatever. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, the reason for you know old school versus new school, it's a choice. And yes. there are many of them. You really got to do your research because there's going to be a lot of instructors out there that's going to claim certain things that they're really not they're, until you're thousands of dollars into it and find out that you're just getting into another modern day scam. I see. Like, I know that uh, some people say that, you know, the difference between old school and new school is uh, the science behind the training, right? And I know that from my experience, is that old school is pretty much the same as new school. The only difference is that it's being explained a little bit more on why you do the things you do. It, it's kind of like your philosophy on the five on how to learn. You start off primitive where nobody knows anything. It's like, ah, right? And then from there, you go to the mechanics. You, you learn, huh, huh. Ho, oh, oh, ho, whatever. And then from there, you go to technical. technical. So now you're learning why you do the things you do mechanically. And as you progress, you start putting the two together, the mechanics and the technical to create 
which is where we want to try to be in the long run so that with enough practice of creating things of the mechanics and the technical together you get fluidity right sir is that correct correct it's um not necessarily what but how you do it yes there's a lot of teachers know what to do yes and there is art and art of how to do it yes and how to do it is entirely a, a different game because anybody can teach like a straight punch or a kick or roundhouse yeah. or hook punch or so forth. That's a what, you know, but how, how do you get the most maximum energy or the maximum emotion or spirit out of it? Yes. That, that is entirely a different thing because the saying, like I've always say, you know, it's the words that you say, mm -hmm. you know, how you say the words has a lot of meaning than just being very monotone. And there's yeah. a lot of instructors, monotone teachers, but then you have the teachers that have that what and how bring out that expression, bring it out that energy, that passion into you. That is what actually feeds you. So that means it's how the, the technique is taught because as an example, a person can do a back fist, okay? You yes. can get very bored into the, doing the back fist, going straight in and straight out. Yeah. That's, that's how you do it. But you want to make sure that, you know, it becomes a little bit more entertaining. So maybe you'll have a, a ball that's swinging and then you hit it and then you spin around into a full 360 degrees and come into the back fist and doing it. Still using the same technique, but says how you are delivering it, where the energy comes, whether the wrist is flicking out or the, the forearm is going, or the shoulders tilting in, everything is how to have the maximum effect uh, for it. So just taking it very analytical from point to point, from point A, to Z, but all the way in between, there's this A, B, C, D, and so forth. If you can do it that way, that's fine. Some people are only interested into A to Z or A to B and forget about the in-between. But the important part is you say that I start here, I end up at my vacation. But the most important part for me is the journey in between, the sightseeing that you see in between. So it's when you get into it, every technique, like when I'm throwing a straight punch out into it and where is it delivered? Am I just doing this or am I turning, twisting and turning my shoulder to have the maximum force of twisting? So a lot of it is how you do it to get the maximum effort into it. There's mm -hmm. a lot of interpretation. You really got to do some research because the Chinese has a way of doing it. Japanese, mm -hmm. Koreans, the Filipino fighting art, the Greeks, uh, Europeans have a different way of punching, but it be, all becomes part of their culture. Some people like only to, to hit with the three knuckles, some only with the one knuckle, some with the two knuckles, some like the four, so many different ways. And mm -hmm. then they say, well, I don't care about the punch. The point is just that I hit you, no join, you get knocked out. It's true. It's interesting because it's a science. Yes. That's why. You know, when people get into the martial arts, it's a science. This is why an art form, it's science. Yes. So I like to call it martialology, the study out of the martial arts or yeah. martial scientists. <laughs> Right, Mark, scientists. No, that's a that's a great term, Sifu. And uh, see, what I've learned through my research is that you're right. Everybody who's interested in wanting to learn martial arts, any form of martial arts, should always do their research first. Don't just sign up and join up with the first school or the closest school to you. Make sure you go straight to the source. And it's like what you've always told me and taught me is you always work and start at the top. And that's one of the biggest reasons why I sought you out is because you are the source. You've been there from the beginning and you actually taught me more in that first three weeks of training than I have in 10 years of training because you've learned to maximize what I already had. And that was the best part of it is that little tweaks made me faster and stronger with my techniques. And that's what I loved about you, Sifu, is that you learn, you are the true maximizer and a professional maximizer, I should say. So I advise all people who 
who don't have an experience to always do some research. And if you do have questions, feel free to comment below here on this channel, on this YouTube channel, where Sifu Wow can actually answer any of those questions that you might have concerning a certain art, okay? So the best thing to do is just comment below, like and share. Maybe someone you might know might need the answer as well. So now Sifu, uh, that was a great answer. What I would like to know now Sifu is uh, someone was asking me, I know you talked about one of your most memorable fights, right? So I would like to know, not me, but someone who wrote in saying, uh, yes, you've had a memorable fight. I, I'm sure you've had many, many memorable fights. Can you maybe explain a little bit more on say, uh, on how you, you, oh boy, let me rephrase that. How can you maximize someone's back fist, right? You know how people will uh, throw their back fist. You have this drill where one person is in a horse stance, just waiting so that you get to tap them on the shoulder, right? The other one is that tiger stance ready to tap them in the shoulder. The other person has to get away, right? Do you, do you know which drill I'm talking about, Sifu? Where you? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So I know that that little tech tweaks that you've made on my back fist, it made me a little faster and more efficient. And how can I say this? Uh, you know, it actually made me better than what I was already doing because you were able to pick up my telegraphs too as well. So is there something like a little gold nugget that you can maybe explain what not to do from cocking your hand or, or something? I, I don't know. Like I said, you, you explained it better than I did. In explaining that, the drill, and the reason why we like to use the back fist, the back fist is only how to develop speed and snap. Because the real, the real answer behind that is not really the back fist, okay? Because mm. you can do the back fist and do it really fast, you see? Where you turn the shoulders, you, you lean forward, you step, and you back fist. But remember, the back fist is only, a, it's a drill. The drill, because it's done a lot in my expression of the Filipino fighting art, Kale Onese Scrimo. And the reason why I do that is because it's based on developing a good snap. And although I may not hit you to knock you out, the objective is to touch you. Why? It's because if you take a look at this when I come out and snap, it's only a snap. But what would happen if I would have this in my hand? And then all of a sudden, it becomes a blade in my hand, in here. So when I'm cutting, you don't see the knife, but I'm going, bam, inside. And with the knife, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be power because even a cut here or here or here or any place else is all I need. And the objective is to develop the back fist so fast that I can have my hand down like this. And then when I'm ready to attack, it's quick, bam and attack. So in other words, in the process while I'm coming up, the knife is actually opening up and then cutting and then coming down. So it's based on, the snap is actually based on drilling for a knife attack. Yes. That way, you see? And the same thing goes like, like I'm doing, the, uh, doing the, the drill. If I'm doing this, I'm also doing the drill where I'm hitting and blocking at the same time. So I'm actually cutting and then cutting back down so it's it's a two-part drill that's a little bit more technical when people are getting into it and yes. that leads us to what we want to eventually get into is what what the form is but that's down the road yeah mm -hmm. so that type of drill is just simple you know there's there's 
a lot of what we call technical fighting principles. One of it is bridging the gap or straight line versus curve line, stepping techniques versus thrusting techniques. There's some of them have 16 fighting principles. Others have 24 to 25 technical fighting principles. We cover that. You know, I'm uh, very grateful mm -hmm. to the great, and you know, he passed on Joe Lewis, you know, who helped me, helped me with the technical fighting principle. He had his wasteful, more so for uh, tournament competition. I turned around and just used that more for, for street and using it for the Filipino fighting arts and see how I can make it a lot better. So that has really helped me out. That's one subject and many of the technical fighting principles, like you say, the, the, the back fist, working with the back fist comes with a lot of things. It's not only the shoulder movements, the, the body movements, the step movements, because everything that has done has got to be done in one. If I'm coming up with the back fist, I actually have to take that one step. If I'm out of distance is that when my front foot lands is when my strike hits and then retreat. In other words, getting in and out. I'm not gonna stay on there and just go bum, 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 bum. I can, mm -hmm. but the objective is to do the most damage on the first strike because I might just need one strike into the, whoop, into the neck and it's over with. Yeah. I don't have to, you know, do all kinds of movements. You know, that's it. I'm not there to turn a person into a hamburger unless it comes to that point. The mm -hmm. objective is just that to stop the fight, defend myself and my loved ones and end it then, quick and, quick and simple. So some people say, what's the difference between going in two or three strikes versus a whole bunch of combination? Well, that's a totally different subject. Yes. No, I, I understand completely, Sifu. Those are, that's a, a great uh, demonstration. It kind of reminds me of the first time you showed me the knife technique, actually, where you made me pull out my uniform a little bit. I didn't know what was coming up and you just told me walk towards me and and I said okay I can do that I walked towards you and all you did was you stood there then you walked towards me and all I hear was click click and almost like a swishing sound and I'm going what was that and I saw your hand do that and it was like back in your pocket and it was like so now do you understand? And I said, understand what Sifu? And he said, and you said, look at your uniform. And I looked at my uniform and it was like, oh my gosh, it was cut. You cut my uniform. I don't know if you remember that day. It was, oh boy, that was in 97. So it's been a while. So. You, you, you cut my uniform. Good thing it was an old ratty uniform, which is okay by me, but it was an experience I'll never forget because it just goes to show you that you can get cut by a knife without even you knowing it. And, and you showed me that there's what, 14 different ways or 16 different ways to open up a fold up knife, right? So that will be again on a different totally subject because I know that you have that in your curriculum as well as in uh, a program that you're working on, which I'm so excited about with your DTS. And of course it's in the one hub kendo section as well, but that was just amazing Sifu. And again, I just want to tell everybody, thank you for joining in. And then I know we have to cut this short. I've got another question. I've got not another. I have quite a few questions for you, but I guess we have to save that for the next episode. The next episode, Sifu Al is going to be talking about, I guess, business a little bit more because you have been quite successful in your martial art business, having hundreds of students and, and thousands, I should say, as well as thousands of and hundreds of branches all over Europe and in the United States and wherever else. I'm not really sure exactly, but you know, we're gonna talk more about business, about what you did before, what could be done now to help, you know, other martial arts schools hopefully prosper like you did. Is that okay, Sifu? Well, yeah, there's another subject too, because I've been getting it 
here. Yes. Some people have been asking me what forms are or patterns are. And, yes. you know, I'd like to address that so they understand why, what, what the importance of form or is it important? Yeah. There's many things. Yes, that's right. um, but we'll cover that as we go along. Yes, that will actually be in the next one as well, is that our forms doing forms important to do because many people don't think doing forms is important myself personally i have personal experience and knowledge through sifu well about why it is important but we will be talking about that at the next episode so do you have any final thoughts that you can yeah. yes sir just so that you just so that a lot of you understand like there's a reason why we do the back fist and why we do it with the knife you know the reason is just that i want to explode out on you and cut you before you have a chance to move and see it on the other end, if you're the recipient of, of seeing this, it teaches you how to be aware and how to read the body language so that you are able to avoid getting strike with a knife or with a back fist or with a stick. So it's a two parts. One, the visual of seeing where I'm going to attack. The, on the other hand, is the visual of seeing how not to get hit. So yeah. it's a two part thing. Okay, no, those, that's a great point, Sifu, because I've been on both end and, you know, it is definitely a great training uh, method. All right, so again, thank you everybody for watching. Don't forget to hit that like, hit the subscribe. If you haven't subscribed to Beyond Kicking and Punching with Sifu Alda Cascos and myself, Sunny Pabuaya, and Make sure you share it because you never know who you might know that might need this as well. So again, thank you very much. Mahalo and God bless. Sifu. Enjoy yourself. Have a nice weekend. See you on the next one.